Hello, my name is Ethan Kaiser. I am a uh, scientist and an atheist. And um, my uh, question is, since the Bible has been scientifically disproven as far as all the claims, you know, through evolution, the theory of evolution, uh, archaeology, you know, Noah's Ark, Adam and Eve, since we know this didn't happen because of our science, I guess science nowadays, um, my question is, how do we have, according to the Bible, how do we have free will if God is this omniscient being that knows everything about us, everything we will do, and he pretty much knows our outcome before we're even created. So he creates us knowing everything we'll do. Since we can't surprise him by our actions, we, are in, we have no free will. Our choices have been predetermined, and that the act of judgment is completely immoral because he knows what we're going to do. Nothing can surprise him. That's my question. Thank you for the question. And, uh... Before you go into an auditorium, if you give a sheet of paper and ask us to write 20 possible questions, that'll come. We've never heard a new one in all of these years that go by. They're pretty much the same questions. It's interesting that you began by saying, as an atheist, all of this has been disproved, and so you live with scientific materialism as your worldview. I studied under John Pokinghorn at Cambridge University. You probably know the name. One of the world's leading quantum physicists who came to exactly the opposite conclusion you did while being the dean at Queen's College, Cambridge, as a quantum physicist, taking the same data you did. So obviously, for a man of his intellectual ability <clears throat> to come to a different conclusion, one would either have to say he's totally stupid to come to that conclusion, or else his empirical basis, please don't keep shaking your head, let me finish, so that you can come and talk afterwards, so he allows us to concentrate what we're saying here. I want to read for you what David Berlinski says about the scientific naturalistic worldview. Do you know who he is? No. One of the world's leading physicists who is an agnostic, borders on atheism, but took issue with <clears throat> Richard Dawkins' book, the, De the God Delusion, and wrote a book called The Devil's Delusion. Here's what he said. <clears throat> Has anyone ever provided proof of God's in existence? Not even close. Has quantum cosmology explained the emergence of the universe or why it is here? Not even close. Have the sciences explained why our universe seems to be fine-tuned to allow for the existence of life? Not even close. This is Berlinski talking. Are physicists and biologists willing to believe in anything as long as it is not enough, not religious thought? Close enough. Has rationalism and moral thought provided us with an understanding of what is good, what is right, and what is moral? Not close enough. Has secularism in the terrible 20th century been a force for good? Not even close to being close. Is there a narrow and oppressive orthodoxy of thought and opinion within the sciences? Close enough. Does anything in the sciences or in their philosophy justify the claim that religious belief is irrational, not even in the ballpark? Is scientific atheism a frivolous exercise in intellectual contempt dead on? Now, I didn't say that, all right? I'm not quoting myself. Please give me your name, sir. Ethan? Ethan? Yes. Ethan, what you're wrestling with is not uncommon. Many people from a scientific and materialistic worldview will say what you've said and come to that conclusion. The problem is what you mispositioned was your concern between determinism and free will. I was, your application could have gone in many different directions, but you came to that one for some reason, which I was unfortunate, I think. At Cambridge, I listened to a talk at the Lady Mitchell Hall in 1990 by Stephen Hawking. As you know, he can't speak, he uses a speech synthesizer. His whole talk was on determinism and freedom. And you know what he concluded? That the tragedy with scientific materialism, if we take, it as, take its assumptions, is that we are not free, we are totally determined. That was the world's leading physicist at that time saying, the very thing you're asking of the Christian faith, he pinned on your backs. As scientific materialists, you can go right online and, uh, and trace it. Lady Mitchell Hall, 1990, somewhere on March, April, May, that time, I was in attendance. And he said, the only escape I have is since I don't know what has been determined, I may as well not be. The whole auditorium moaned and groaned with an escape hatch that he gave for himself after telling us that we were completely determined. That's Berlinski's issue. That is actually even what people like Dawkins will concede, or uh, Pinker, you read Steven Pinker and the others. So totally determined. So the question is, were you free to ask this question? Yep. Um, I don't believe any 
of us actually have free will because we are strictly material. So you're actually as a machine automaton asking me this question? We are all made up of our past experiences. Okay, but you're not free then. You're not free. You're not making a truth statement. My truth statement. I mean, what I'm saying is our memories and our states. No, no, no. no. Hear me carefully. Okay. If you're totally determined, yes. you're pre-wired to think the way you do. Nature versus nurture, yes. Sorry? Nature versus nurture. When nature versus nurture. Yes. Regardless, okay. the nurture may provide a different environment, but sure. the nature is you're hardwired yes. to come out to the same conclusion. Out of flux, nothing but flux. You know, what you put into the computer, the ultimate is going to come out. But you have to ask yourself, are you making a truth claim? If you are making a truth claim, you're rising above the bondage of total subjectivity. And the moment you claim a truth claim, you're violating determinism. And so I just leave you with that. And let's, let's meet afterwards. Hey, hey, Ethan, we want to chat with you. You know, you're the kind of guy we come here for. So afterwards, you, you come here and we'll chat with you. Come here, give me a shake. Hand. Well, let me ask the question and throw it out generally. How do you all feel about the expression free will talking about man? Let me answer that. Yeah. We'll you, let you answer you that. Asked, you asked me how I feel about it, <laughs> not what I think about it. I see it matters a lot to you. No. Well, it, it is. It's, an, it's such an important concept because I, I always say that all of us have had our minds played with by pagan ideas. And we're taught from the time we're little kids that nature operates independent from the power of God and that there's inherent powers of nature like gravity and so on. We also have been taught from childhood, from infancy, a pagan understanding of human volition. And that pagan knowledge is that we have a free will that is capable of choosing whatever we want from a spirit or attitude of indifference with no prior bent inclination or disposition to the left or to the right, to the good or to the bad. Now, all Reformed people say that man has a free will in the sense that we have a faculty of choosing that remains after the fall. Every person out there has the ability to choose what they want. And you have all made choices to be here today because that's what you wanted to do more than not wanted to do. And that's what gets us into so much trouble. We sin because we choose to sin. All right? So we know we have a faculty of choosing, and in the sense that we have wills, uh, then we're volitional creatures, then you can say we have a free will. But at the same time, when the Bible speaks about our will, it speaks about, the, it doesn't like to use the term free. Because you have to say free from what? If you want to say free from coercion, yes, we have a will that is free from coercion. But if, we, if you mean free, free, from moral bondage and slavery, which is what the pagan concept is, that we're free to be righteous and to do the right thing and so on. Oh, no, no, no. The Bible says we're dead in sin and trespasses, that, this, that the will is enslaved to this uh, desires. Our, the desires of our heart are only evil continuously. That was the battle between between Augustine and Pelagius, between Luther and Erasmus, between Calvin and Pigius, and between Edwards, you know, and those guys. And, uh, but we, like Calvin said, if you mean by free will the ability to choose the things of God unaided by regeneration, then free will is far too grandiose a term to apply to us mortals. Is there, a, is there a term you would prefer to use, a human responsibility, full volition? What do you say instead of free will? Well, I still say free will, but I, then I have to qualify, you know, like Augustine did, and what, what uh, Sinclair was getting at earlier, the distinction between, Augustine said, you know, before the fall we had uh, liberium arbitrium, a free will, and we also had libertas, liberty, meaning the power to do the right in the things of God. After the fall, we retained the liberium arbitrium, the free will, the faculty of choosing. What we lost was our liberty. And only the Holy Spirit can restore the liberty 
that we have lost at the fall. And the problem you have with semi-Pelagian theology is it's been so influenced by paganism that it wants to retain a kind of a pre-fall view of, uh, of the will, or at least they recognize that there's a fall and the, fall, the will's been weakened by sin. They don't really grasp the depths of that weakness. You know, man is sick in sin and trespasses rather than dead in sin and trespasses. That's why I wrote the book, Willing to Believe. I you know, canvassed the whole history of this debate over free will because for my desire is not simply to support Reformed theology and biblical theology, but to try to get people to, to realize where these ideas come from. They don't come from, you don't see big treatises in the Bible about free will. You do hear about our responsibility and all of that, but you don't find a pagan notion of freedom in the scriptures. All right.